Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we are solving another easy problem for some of those people that are just joining the Leak Code Grind. It is a 169 majority element. Given an array of nums of size n, return the majority element. The majority element is the element that appears more than n minus 2, sorry, n divided by 2 times. You may assume that the majority element always exists in the array. So let's look at some basic examples. We have an array of size 3 here. There's three numbers, 3, 2, and 3. Obviously, we can see that the number that occurs the most is 3. So that's how we return 3. What about for this one? We have 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. Well, how many times does 2 appear? It appears 1, 2, 3, 4 times. And the number 1 appears 1, 2, 3 times. So pretty straightforward. One way that we can solve this problem, and you've already seen this in action, is by basically iterating over left uh, left to right over our uh, numbers, and then for each number, counting how many times it occurs in the array, and then we can go through our dictionary here of the counts and simply find the one with the greatest value, because the greatest valued one will be, by definition, because the majority element has to exist in the array, the one with the greatest value. Now. What I've cut off here, and what you don't see, is that actually they ask you to solve this with big O of 1 space, which means that we cannot actually use um, this mapping here because it would actually require big O of n um, space to build it. So how can we do this in constant space? That means that we have to go over our array but not define any data structures. So the hint in this problem is that, well, one, we know that the majority element must exist in the array. So therefore, by definition, there will be an element whose count is greater than every other element. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over the array in left to right, and we're going to keep track of what could be the majority element. So for example, we're going to say that the candidate for our majority element, candidate, is actually going to equal to, uh, let's just say it's the first number, right? Candidate equals two. Um, and what is the count of two? So the count of two is going to be one in the beginning because all we've seen is a one. So what we're gonna do is for each time we iterate over our array, we're gonna check, is the current number equal to our candidate? If it is, then we're gonna increment the count. If not, we're gonna decrement the count. If the count of our candidate ever becomes zero, that means that it's probably not the majority element, and we're just going to assume that the current element is actually the majority element until proven otherwise. And we'll see this in action. So let's start from the beginning. We start at the beginning, and we assume that our candidate is two, and it has a count of one. Then we go to the next index, and we see it's a two again. So now the count of our candidate is two. Then we go to the next index, and we see that it's actually one. And that doesn't equal to 2, but we've still seen more 2s than we have 1s, so the 1, we don't know whether it's the majority element or not. So we're simply going to decrement the count and make it equal to 1. We then see another 1, and at this point, um, you know, 1 could be the majority element, but we don't know because we don't see what's in the rest of the array. So we just decrement our count, and now it becomes 0. So now that it becomes 0, remember that we change our candidate to be whatever number we just saw. So the candidate um, is actually going to be 1. And then we're going to assume that this is um, our count here. So we're going to reset the count to be 1. And then we're going to see another 1 here. And we're going to increment our count. So now it's 2. So then we see a 2. And we can decrement our count because it's not a 1. And it's a 1 again. We're going to see another 2. We're going to see a 0 here. And then 2 becomes our new candidate again. And it has a count of 1. So, And then 2 actually is our final answer. And the reason this works is, let's just say you know these numbers were in a different order. What if it was 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, right? Once we process this one, we'll see that our candidate is 2, and it has a count of 5. And whatever happens here, we'll just decrement this count, but it will never actually go to zero, uh, which means that two is our candidate. So basically, it's the element that's remaining. Either it's the last element, or we just simply didn't see enough other numbers to basically say that our candidate is not the majority element. And we know that this will always work because the majority element is guaranteed to exist in the array. 
So that's all we have to do. We just go over left to right. We keep track of the candidate. We keep track of the count and whatever our candidate is at the end, um, we return that. And this is constant space because these are just um, storing pointers. They're not actually defining any extra space. Uh, they're just storing numbers. So it is our zero of one uh, space complexity requirement. So let's code this up. It's really straightforward. Just a couple lines of code. I'll see you in the code editor. Okay. We went over the intuition. Now let's go over the code. So remember that we want to iterate left to right over our nums and basically keep count of the numbers we see. So we have a candidate here uh, and this is just, oops, candidate. And this is just going to equal to whatever the first number in our array is. So it's nums of zero and obviously it's count is one because we've only seen it once. Now we want to iterate over the nums from left to right, starting from obviously the first index because we already processed the zeroth index. So we're going to say for num in nums, starting from the first index to the end, we're going to say if the num equals our candidate, then the count of the candidate should be incremented. So count uh, plus equals to one. Otherwise, if the count is actually equal to zero, then our current number becomes the candidate. So candidate equals num, and obviously the count of our candidate is one because we've just reset the count. Otherwise, we just decrement the count of our candidate and that's it. At the end, all we need to do is simply return, ah, can't type, return the candidate and we are done. Let's just run this, make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes while typing this up, cool. And once we submit it, we can see that it is accepted. Perfect. So time and space complexity. So time complexity, as you can see, all we're doing is going over uh, our nums uh, from left to right. And we're just checking each number, basically whether it equals another number. So this is just going to be big O of N because for each N um, check, we just do a big O of one check. So it's just N uh, where N equals number of nums in nums. Okay. Space complexity, we already went over this in the question because we're not defining any extra space here. Um, setting these variables does not count as extra space because they're not dependent on anything. They're just constant space allocations. The space is just big O of one. So that's how you solve majority element. A really good problem if you're just getting into lead code uh, because you know there's multiple solutions. You could do it with a dictionary, but that's not the most efficient. So it kind of pushes you, even though it's not very hard to kind of think and try to do it in a way that's, you know, a little bit more optimal and save on the space. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to the channel? Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.